Matchroom boxing fight card Saturday night in San Antonio, Texas, deep in the heart of Texas, where Jesse Bam Rodriguez is the unbeaten local regional favorite here, defending his WBC Junior Featherweight Championship junior against a Junior yeah. Bantamweight, forgive me, because I'm going to confuse myself on the weight classes. Junior Bantamweight division here on this to fight against a former world champion in uh, a, a Thailand fighter, uh, Sri Saket Sorung Visai is his name. Sorung Visai is a well-known veteran if you follow boxing. So this is a classic matchup, Dan Rayfield, of the young, up-and-coming, unbeaten, brand-new champ against a veteran former champ. We see this all the time in boxing. Give me some thoughts to open up here. First of all, excellent matchup. As you mentioned, uh, Bam Rodriguez is a young champion. He is presently the youngest active world title holder in the sport of boxing. He's fighting in front of his hometown crowd. He is undefeated. And he's in a tough fight, man. Let me tell you, Srisiket Sarangvisai is no joke. I consider him a borderline Hall of Famer. Uh, he has two huge victories against Chocolatito Gonzalez at a time when Chocolatito was considered the pound-for-pound -pound king of boxing. Sarang Visai is best known for his second title reign that started when he uh, scored the first controversial decision over Roman Gonzalez, but left no doubt in the immediate rematch when he knocked him out cold. But he's a two-time champion. He had won a title a few years earlier and lost it to a fighter named Carlos Quadras. Carlos Quadras, who do you who was that, you ask? Well, he is the man that was dethroned, or not dethroned because it was a vacant title, but beaten by Jesse Rodriguez in his most recent fight. And so he's going from beating Quadras, now he's taking on Sarungvisai, a guy that had lost a technical decision uh, to him back in 2014. So it's been quite a while. That was a competitive fight until uh, a headbutt situation uh, short-circuited that fight. But Quadras and Sarungvisai, those who follow this closely, if, if, if not, I'll give you a little knowledge, they're two of the big four, like the four horsemen, like the four kings of the 115-pound weight class over the last several years. And that's Quadras, Sarung Visay, who's in the fight Saturday, along with Chocolatito Gonzalez, who's a guaranteed Hall of Famer, and also Juan Francisco Estrada, who's also a likely Hall of Famer. And those four guys, similar to the greats of the 80s, Duran and Leonard and Hagler and Hearns, they've fought each other multiple of times. They've been in great battles. It's been a tremendous round robin over the last several years. These guys mm -hmm. make exciting fights. And... And Jesse Rodriguez, you know, he would, took the fight against Quadras on short notice. He was supposed to have the fight with Sarung Visay for the vacant title. Sarung Visay uh, became ill and had to withdraw from the fight. Bam Rodriguez, who was on that undercard, stepped up to the main event. And what did he do? He dropped Quadras, uh, won a, a, a decision, won the, the vacant title, and now was making his first defense against Sarung Visay. So it's a really good matchup. It should be an exciting fight. And it's an interesting fight from the point of view of, you know, who wins and how, because, you know, do you like the youth and the aggressiveness and the speed and the, and the confidence of a young kid like Bam Rodriguez, who thinks he can't be beaten is on top of the world or the real steady, excellent veteran uh, who's seen and done more and forgotten more boxing than Bam Rodriguez has ever known, who still, even at his age, 34 and a Southpaw still kind of going strong. Well, and in the case of Jesse Rodriguez, who you talked to uh, last week in an exclusive one-on-one -on -one interview, this is fascinating because a lot of this has come quickly for him. He is the youngest, this is correct, the youngest world champion in boxing right now, just barely turned 22 years of age, right, Bam Rodriguez? That is correct, and I'm going to take uh, take a little wind out of anybody anybody's sales who's in our age bracket. He is the <laughs> first world champion in boxing. Don't say sport. it. Don't I, say I it. Have to say it. I have to say it. The first world, at least, I, I can't speak for the women's side. Maybe I'm missing something. But in terms of men's boxing champions, mm -hmm. he's the first world champion born in the 2000s. Uh, yeah, because he's, he's just turned 22, born in 2000. We are getting old because we, we go all the way back to, like, Sugar Ray Leonard. We go all the way back to Muhammad Ali in our well, eras, Larry Holmes, blah, blah, blah. Bam Rodriguez wasn't on the planet for any of that. What's He up was that? born in the year that I started covering professional boxing as my <sighs> job. He so, was born in this century. Yeah. He was not in the last century. I do feel old. In any event, let's get into this and what we think is going to happen. So Bam is a good puncher. Uh, Sorung Visai can take a punch. What do you and believe good, happens here? And, and by the way, Sorung Visai is a good puncher himself. I mean, just take a look at what he did to Chocolatito Gonzalez, who had been indestructible. 
and he didn't just knock him out or defeat him. He laid him out cold. And I was mm-hmm. at that fight in Carson, California, and it's an outdoor tennis stadium. And you could just hear a pin drop when he got knocked out because so much of the crowd there that night was rooting for Chocolatito Gonzalez. Um, this is a this is a tough, tough fight. Um, but as I as I often would think about in boxing, um, if all things are equal, it's hard to pick against the youth and and the exuberance and the attitude of a, of a Jesse Rodriguez who doesn't know how to lose, who has really not taken any wear and tear on his body. He's coming off an excellent victory against Quadras. And Sarang Visay has not been, at, I mean, he's winning and he's looking good, but he's not at the A-level top of his game the way he was a few years ago. He's getting older. He's got 50-plus fights, takes its toll. He's traveling to the United States to Bam's hometown. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's got some uh, that takes wear and tear. He's certainly capable of winning the fight. Don't make any mistake about it. He's a good puncher. He's vastly experienced. He's had uh, nothing given to him in this career. He is fearless, and he's got a good team behind him. All things equal, though, TJ, it's hard to pick against Bam Rodriguez. He's so young. He's so strong. He's so excited, and he's got a, a you know just something in terms of his mentality. Like I'm not getting beat. He's got a great corner in Robert Garcia uh, as his head trainer. Uh, it's it's really a tough combination. And uh, so all that said, I have to go with Bam Rodriguez by the decision. All right. Uh, interesting. A viewer was watching us and put the comment up there. Theo was watching us and said, hey, he's not losing Bam a decision. There it is. Uh, if they go to the scorecards, we know what's going to happen. You and I are of that same belief. I do not believe that this is going to be a Bam Rodriguez knockout. I think Sorung Visai is too tough, but I, like you, believe Rodriguez is ultimately better, will win more rounds. You and I are in concert here, Dan Rayfield. Let's lock it in. We both like Jesse Bam Rodriguez to defend his uh, junior Bantamweight World Championship by decision. It's paying right now on the BetUS line minus 140. We both like that. And we should say, too, to the audience, there is not a BetUS line on the over-under, but the implication would be from both of us, take the over. We it's, it's automatic. We obviously think this is a decision win, so take the over whatever it is. You may see an over-under out there at like 9.5 or 10.5 rounds. It's not there on BetUS. We're giving you more insight double, even though it's not locked in here on this fight as an official uh, play for that. Do you buy into the uh, the scorecard thing? You've seen this so many times in your career. Home crowd is behind him when he's landing punches. It influences the judges, et cetera, et cetera. How much of a factor do you believe that is, Dan, for, for Bam Rodriguez in his home area? I'll say this, uh, TJ. It can't hurt. I don't think the judges go out of their way to do that. I mean, they are humans. They can be susceptible to that, but they are trained to try to – uh, tune that out to ignore that. But again, they're human beings. So it does happen. Like you said, Bam is going to be the hometown crowd favorite. They're not fighting in a big arena. It's not like they're going to be in a huge stadium with, you know, tens of thousands of people going wild. The arena that they're fighting in is about a 3000 seater. Uh, they expect it to be pretty filled up. Um, but if you're, if you're of the mindset that it's a Bam Rodriguez decision win, it's just another brick in that wall you're building on that pick that he's at home. And if it goes a distance, uh, there's a pretty good chance that the judges will at least be a little more friendly towards him. you know. And when I say that, it's not as though the judges would be doing anything wrong, but if it's a close round, maybe they're going to give him the benefit of the doubt. That's just human nature. That's what happens. It's called hometown advantage. It's sort of the similar way that if you're an NBA team playing at home or you're an mm-hmm. NFL team playing at home, that you get that little extra something. The only sport where it doesn't matter is baseball, where, where it's not about judging. You know, If you win, you get last licks if you're the home team. In the other sports, it's just something that is more mental, I think, than than practical in terms well, of the clearly uh, officials are human. They get affected. The referee in the ring might get affected, but a judge ringside, but no different than an NFL official, an NBA referee will get affected and an umpire in baseball by booing, by crowds booing and, and haranguing them. And we now have instant replay to review their calls if they well, get just- it wrong, et cetera, et cetera. But I'm just saying if Bam starts scoring – in this fight, the crowd will be behind him, and it human nature has to influence judges. Sorung Visai scores some combinations or some big punches. There might be an ooh or an ah, but it's not going to affect the judges from a crowd noise standpoint. You well, know that. That's the only when thing I, I'm making. When I'm making a pick of a bam by a decision, it, it's not in my thought process that it's because the judges at home are going to be helping him out. But if you're making that pick, and especially if you're actually wagering money on it, 
Uh, that would be one factor of many when making the decision that, like I said, it can't hurt. If the fight was in Thailand, we might be having a different conversation. The fight is in San Antonio, <laughs> yes. Texas, a few minutes from where the kid lives. Um, it, 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 when you're collecting all of the data and you're going to put your own hard-earned money down in a fight, that has to be one of many factors. And it, as I said, TJ, it can't hurt. Yes. Amen. On all of those. Um, one other thing here, I was thinking of this when uh, when you brought this up. You hit on the Dev Devin Haney undisputed lightweight title win on the Bet US show back a couple of weeks ago, and he did have to go to the foreign land down under to Australia uh, and fight George Cambosis in his home country where Haney had never been and never fought before. Now, none of the judges were Australian, so there's not a bias there, but there's 40,000 people in the rugby stadium with the retractable roof that are cheering for anything Cambosis is trying to do. And Haney just completely silenced all of that and put on a dominant performance. Uh, but that's, and, that's and it, the difference. That's the difference. Yes. That was not a close fight. There was no way the judges, I mean, you never say never, I guess, but that was so blatantly obvious who was dominating that fight that it was impossible. It felt like for anybody to do the scoring any other way um, on paper, I always felt like Devin Haney was going to win that fight pretty handily. This fight between Bam Rodriguez and Srisiket Sarangisai, it seems to be a closer matchup just because it's not like Rodriguez is an otherworldly defensive fighter or a phenomenal speed demon or has great punching power. You know, he does everything very well, but Sarangisai is no joke. There's a reason he's been around as long as he has and still going strong and been a two-time champion and has beaten Hall of Fame fighters and has been in uh, even fights where he's lost. He's been competitive. Like, for example, um, you know, when he lost to Estrada, that was a close fight. But the point is, this is not uh, this Bam Rodriguez against Sarangisai is a different ball game compared to Haney going on the road against Cambosis. Where remember when we did that fight and picked it, and it was just ju not just on Bet US, Devin Haney, as the traveling American to Australia, was the betting favorite. In this case, Bam Rodriguez, the hometown guy who is the champion, obviously is the favorite. So that was a little bit unusual for Haney to be the favorite going on the road like that. But, you know, the odds proved out and he won the fight very handily. I think this one is a more competitive fight than what we saw in Australia. All right. Should be in that case. Again, it is on DAZN, the streaming service. It is the main event from Matchroom Boxing. So we're looking forward to that with Rodriguez, Bam Rodriguez, and Sorung Visai from Thailand in the main event. Mm -hmm.